Hello and welcome to module one of English 130 Foundations of Written Communication. Uh, my name is Justin Pritchard. I'm going to be your uh, instructor throughout this course and I'm really excited to dive into the course content and talk a little bit about uh, the way that the course is going to unfold. Um, a couple of points of note. First thing you should do if you haven't done it yet is uh, jump into the Start Here module. Um, it gives you the syllabus for the course. It gives you the basic outline of expectations. Um, it talks a little bit about course trajectory and uh, how you allocate your time. Um, it gives a really useful overview for the class. So, so certainly make sure you take a look at the syllabus. Make, make sure you take a look at that course overview. Um, in addition to that, I published uh, every week I'll be publishing an announcement that you can access on D2L's homepage once you click on our course. The announcement just gives you kind of a mile high view of the course um, for that week. And so I have just some, some basic guidelines this week. I talk a little bit about the Start Here module, what you find there. I talk about expectations for the discussion boards and uh, your posts. And then I give you just kind of some, some basic thoughts about the class. And I do that once or twice a week. Uh, certainly every Monday, uh, you'll see that post. And then again, on, uh, on Wednesdays, just to kind of remind you to get your discussion boards and, and um, any assignments that might be coming in for the week. I also wanted to make sure that I, I made it very clear. I included my uh, information for self, my cell phone to text me if you have any questions and you want to send me a text. If you'd like to send an email, the email uh, is monitored just as, as often uh, as myself. Um, so, so I don't have a pref strong preference one way or the other, um, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you might have. As the course goes on, they'll have opportunities for uh, live office hours so we can have conversations in real time about your papers, um, about writing, about concerns for the course if they arise. Um, and so if you're interested in that, we can certainly also schedule that. To kind of get into the class itself, my the thing I'm, I'm most excited about in a composition class, I've been teaching composition for my entire career. Um, I've been in all different roles in education. For the last eight years, I served as a uh, full-time professor uh, and a department chair. Uh, and I now moved into academic administration, but really my, my love is teaching and, and of teaching, I really love teaching first-year composition because I think that is the question that's so important. And one of the ways that I describe the, the rhetorical situation and one of the ways I describe the importance of composition is by understanding a tree. So, so I don't have one. Uh, I don't have one at my disposal. I have my plant behind me here. I guess that can serve um, in the interim. But think about a tree, right? Um, when you visualize that thing, we can all settle on the object. Right? We, we know that a tree is a tree. We can point to it. It has green leaves. It has a brown trunk, right? And there's there's all kinds of ways. But we when we think of a tree, there's some basics we can all agree on. Now. There's also nuances, right? Like you can measure a tree in a lot of different ways. You can think about its height, you can think about its width, you can think about its age, you can think about its type, right? Like all these different things that we can, all these qualities and all these classifications we can attribute to a tree. But th the tree is still a tree throughout it. It's this thing that exists outside of us. And so when we begin thinking about what a thing is and how we define it, really the way that we define it, the things that we choose to measure play a big part in what that is. And then we can even move a step beyond that. You know, we might think about um, you know, that for some people, a tree is lumber. And for some people, a tree is uh, a resource, a, a biodiversity. Still other people see it as a habitat, right? You could study what lives in it. You could look at the tree simply as um, a representation of mathematics. We all have that word problem uh, where we had to measure the shadow of a tree and then figure out its height. and and all of that. But regardless of that, we look at that tree through so many, whatever lens we pick to look at that tree really defines the experience for us. When we start thinking about reading, when we start thinking about writing, it's all about those lenses. It's all about those perspectives. It's all about how is it that you can help somebody who sees a tree as lumber understand it also as a habitat. Because both of those things are equally true at the same time. And yet the way that we define it, the way that we think about it, really changes how that thing exists. 
that's at the core of what we're doing this week. When we're starting to take a look at reading, when we're starting to look at a text, when we're analyzing something rhetorically, we're thinking about how does that text exist for different populations? How does that text exist for different groups? And so when we're looking at these different readings, when we're starting to think about what somebody's purpose was in designing a text and what that text's effect was, we've all had the experience of watching a TV show that we think is really bad. But it's always interesting to think about, well, who would this TV show be good for, right? Or who would this YouTube video or who would this, you know, Insta post or whatever, who would this thing, who, who was that created for? And how would I understand it better? Like, what would it take for me to understand it better? That's at the essence of what we're doing when we're trying to understand the rhetorical situation. When we're trying to write, we're trying to anticipate what we need to tell our audience to get them to understand us. When we read, we're trying to look at the cues that our writer has given to us so that we can understand what the point is of the text that they're trying to clarify, of the idea, excuse me, that they're trying to clarify. And so I hope that you see some of these threads. And, and if, if uh, you wanna have further conversations, please, by all means, uh, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to elaborate. Um, and I think you'll see some of the threads of this in, uh, in the reading for this week. So in chapter one, in chapter two, um, and in the excerpts from chapter 20. Um, once again, I'm thrilled to be a part of this class. I look forward to engaging with all of you this week. And I, uh, I, I can't wait to get started. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon.